Hi, and welcome to another 5-minute tip. In this tip, we're going to look at the target object, sort of see what we can do when we get two different objects to aim at each other. What I mean by objects aiming at each other is similar to what you get when you create a perspective camera with a target. So if I create a target camera and then sort of move out of its way, we can sort of see that the camera is pointing towards something. Now what it's pointing towards is this target object. So anywhere I move this object, the camera points. And anywhere I move the camera, it remains pointing at that object. So that's probably a paradigm everyone's familiar with. Let's see what happens when we apply it to regular objects. I've got a pair of cones here. The green cone, I'm going to go to Cinema 4D Tags, and I'm going to add a target. Now the target object requires a sort of target, the target tag requires a target object to look at. So what I'll do is drag the purple cone into the target object slot. So now the green cone is sort of looking at the purple cone. I guess it makes more sense if I adjust the orientation of these to be uh, Z. So the green cone is looking at the purple cone now. I can actually make this a bit more interesting by adding a target object to the purple cone and making it look at the green cone. So now we essentially have a pair of objects that will constantly look at each other no matter which one I move. That in itself might be a fun tip, but how does it apply? Well, here's how I've been using it. Let's say you've got a robotic arm and you wanted to be able to articulate the upper part of the arm and have it look a little bit more realistic. So one thing that I would suggest doing is creating hydraulic rams or pneumatic rams, sort of an actuator. So let's make an actuator really quickly and let's see how we would hook it up using target objects. We'll create a cylinder and just sort of place it where it needs to be. Doesn't need to be perfect. And then I'm just going to copy that cylinder to have the, the inner part. And then we can go to the perspective view and sort of make the inner part of the cylinder narrower. So again, this doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a demo. So I'm doing things a little bit sloppy here. So what we can do is we can essentially make the lower part of the cylinder let me give it a material so we can see it more clearly so we want the red cylinder to stay with the large arm and we want the let's see let's let's leave the inner part of the cylinder as pure white we want the white cylinder to stay stuck to the upper arm and we also want to have control over the pivot points. So this is the one part where it gets a little bit tricky. We can't exactly move the pivot point of these primitive objects. So what I typically do is select one object, in this case the red cylinder, and I'm just going to group it. That places it in a null object at its exact position. And then I'll do the same with the white cylinder. I'll just group it. Alt-G or Option-G. Now that I have these uh, sort of encapsulated in a null object, what I can do is select the null object and use the Axis Translation tool to move the null object to the tip, sort of where it will attach to the robotic arm. Let's say it's somewhere here for the lower one. So now we have the lower arm and the upper arm with these objects sort of at their respective points. The last thing we need to do is change the orientation. So by default, the target object is going to go along the blue or Z axis. So all we need to do is rotate this 90 degrees so that it now points toward the other one. So I'll do the same here and rotate it 90 degrees so it points upwards to toward the white arm. And these objects are now pointing at each other. Now what we need to do is take the lower part of the arm and add it as a child of the large arm. That way when we move the large arm, 
it moves with it. And then we do the same for the white cylinder. We move it into the small arm, so it's a child of the small arm. So when we move the small arm, it moves as well. Now right now, as you can see, things don't work really well. But if we add our target objects, it'll work really well. So I'm just going to say Cinema 4D Tags, Target. And I want this object to target the other object. And I'll do the same right here. Target. And I'm going to drag the other object into the target property. Now when I move the small arm, you get this sort of hydraulic look. And you can move this object around however you want. And when you sort of move these to actuate the arm, everything just sort of works. Now you can see here when I extend it too much, it sort of pulls out of itself. Well, that just means that we need larger cylinders. Now because everything we did is in a null object, it's not very difficult to make these cylinders larger. All we have to do is move them around and just sort of extend how far they go until they reach. So now if we move the small arm, you can see we have a much better ability to extend and contract it. So this was a little bit of an advanced tip, I guess. I mean, it's using really simple functions of Cinema 4D. I think these have been in Cinema 4D since at least version 6. So we're talking about features that predate Mac OS X uh, because Cinema 4D 7 and Mac OS X came out around the same time, I think, if memory serves me correctly. Either way, this is a really easy tip and you can use it for rigging all sorts of stuff. Uh, one little thing that I will mention is that there is an additional option called the up vector. The up vector is an additional object that the, let's see, in this case it would be the, the green y-axis needs to point at. Sometimes when you're using target objects, and I'll use the camera as an example again, when you sort of, uh, let's see if I can make it happen, when you cross the threshold, the object will flip around very quickly, just like that. So this happens kind of gently because the objects aren't on the same plane. But if the objects were on the same plane, like the hydraulic objects we were just looking at, let's just make these both have an X position of zero. So if we were to move the camera, the minute the camera passes the top of the null object, it flips over like that instantly. You can see the arrow change direction. So the up vector can help you control some of these sort of uh, side effects. And if you're having issues where your objects are flipping around, just add an up vector and that way you can tell it which way it should point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tip. This is more along the lines of the technical kind of stuff I love to model. And I hope you enjoyed it and that you're able to use it sometime. Until next time, see ya.